I'm going to build off Anna's talk and talk about sort of the same problem I hit architecting a project with made.com. So uh, my name is Ben. I work for Theodo, which is a startup helping other startups to launch MVPs and larger companies to work at startup speed. So I've been working there for about two years and actually doing React Native for almost exactly two years. And that got me thinking about the first React Native meetup, which was in the first week I was at Theodo. And I was extremely lost and didn't know what was happening which luckily, thanks to meetup.com, we can see my very confused face. Um, so I just wanted to quickly say thank you, sort of the community for helping me to develop my React Native skills. I think being able to come to these meetups every week has really helped me progress as a developer. So jumping into the uh, particular use case I'm talking about. So uh, made.com, uh, who here knows what made.com do? I guess uh, everyone living in London has seen, whoa, that's fast has seen their advertising. They're a, a large e-commerce. Uh, they cut down costs by doing quite innovative lead time and production systems. And although they have a few showrooms, they're mainly in e-commerce, so they cut down costs on brick and mortar stores. And that means that their website is massively important to their business, because it's sort of the core of it. And all of this advertising campaign, I'm sure all of you have seen, is directing to their websites and their, and their mobile app. Their mobile app being written as a native iOS app, and their website being written in sort of an off-the-shelf e-commerce, non-single page application. So the project we're doing with them is to migrate their website to React and their mobile app to React Native to allow Android users to have access to the app, the team to share skills between the website and the app, and a sharing of code between React and React Native. Also, we're doing some server-side rendering stuff for SEO, but I'm just going to focus on the code sharing in this talk. So as Anna mentioned, there are different types of code. We sort of split it up into UI render code, business logic, and configuration. So UI render, as Anna covered, and I won't go over much, but it's a different render environment is the key message. So divs are not exactly equal to views. And there are different uh, libraries that try to tackle this. So there's React Native Web, which was used in Twitter Lite. And actually, Twitter, although they still use it in Twitter Lite, withdrew support of the open source library because they said they didn't have the facilities to support it. React XP, which, as Anna mentioned, Microsoft is more pushing Xamarin. And finally, the style components universal. So we store style components in Anna's uh, talk. So it's a set of uh, visual primitives for the component age as their tagline. So we can have a button when we can use sort of CSS style syntax, and that renders out I'm a style button. And they use this weird syntax called tag template literals, where we can pass in sort of a function call. It's a bit weird, but we found it really useful on React projects. Now, it's an experimental branch of style components. Uh, which was called Style Components Universal or Style Components Primitive. And this allows you to render to React, actually to Sketch and to React Native, which is really cool if you want to integrate with designers. And it supports um, a number of primitives. Uh, so it builds off um, React Primitives, which is a library for solving the problem we heard about in the last talk, which supports many things, but some things like text inputs are still not supported. And Style Components Universal builds off that. So from the primitives branch of style components, we can import text, which we want to render an ampersand, uh, another piece of text, which is like a swatch name. We can use these as JSX components and render something out. And that allows us to render in React Native, in Sketch, and in React. And we thought this might be a solution to our problem of sharing code. But actually, we hit some problems. When they released it, they said this is an experimental release. There might be bugs, and also the documentation isn't really there, which is what you really want to hear when you're trying to sell something. Um, and we were hitting issues which we were hitting with React Native Web in the server-side rendering. So we're using Next.js. There are known issues with integrating it, although there is now an example of how to do it. But the issues we were hitting were really too much for us to handle. Also, uh, at a previous meetup here, I had a chat with a few developers. And we sort of came to the conclusion that web, mobile web, and native environments require a specific design and user experience. Your mobile web application is different to your native web application. Pressing a button on native is different to pressing a button on the web browser on your phone. And therefore, really, the styling of the UI should be different between the environments. So when we talk about UI render code, we sort of didn't focus on that. Um, and coming into the other types of code, so business logic configuration and API formatting, so API formatting, that's things like function calls, authentication, formatting of requests, and formatting of responses. That's sort of uh, render environment independence. We don't mind if we're rendering that in native or in web. We can reuse code there. 
configuration. So as Anna mentioned, things like translations, uh, constants, these aren't render environment dependent. Uh, if we update a translation on our app, we want it to update on our website. So again, we can share this code. And business logic, again, if a user can only add 20 items to the basket on web, the rule probably holds on native as well. So again, this is business, uh, this is render environment independence. So coming to the same conclusion as, Anna talk, as Anna's talk, business logic, configuration, API and formatting, we can share all of this. Jumping into some other examples of the sort of stuff we're sharing at made.com. So for state management and data, we're using Redux and Apollo. So we're using Apollo for the GraphQL interface to Elasticsearch backend. Um, Apollo originally came with Redux built in as part of it in its first version, and you can integrate with that store uh, through an API. But they moved out of that and came with their own state management system in later versions. But that's not really integrated with a lot of the libraries that we use, things like React Intel, things like Redux Saga, and we're also using uh, Redux Beacon for our analytics. So we thought we'd keep UI state in Redux, so is a modal open or closed, translations, uh, analytics events, and product data, search, pagination, we kept all this in Apollo. And this is completely render environment independent. Our Apollo queries are the same in native as they are on web, and our application state for the large part, with the exception of some modals, um, are uh, render environment independent. So we can share those between the two applications. And to share those, we make a massive use of higher order components. So higher order components come from functional programming. They're not massively a part of React, but they come from its sort of functional compositional nature. And we do things uh, like this for our Apollo queries. So this is a higher order component. It is a function that actually returns a function that takes a component and wraps it. So this is a higher order component. And this is a function that returns it. So we pass in our GraphQL query and some backup data in case the network call fails. This will then return our higher order components, which we can wrap around a component, and this will wrap the GraphQL query, inject the props from GraphQL, uh, sorry, from Apollo, render the backup data, and any props that were passed in originally. And this allows us to reuse our with products, higher order components across native and web, our with categories, our with baskets. It allows us to have all that code shared between the two environments. So yeah, search results, baskets, products. But how do we share the code? So we had a long conversation as a team about should we use a mono repo or should we have separate repos and sort of treat each one, uh, have a shared one which would sort of be versioned and be an interface to native and web. We decided after a big debate to go for three repositories. Uh, so a native repository with the React native code, a web repository with the React code and the server code for server side rendering. And finally, a shared repository which would be transpiled into CommonJS and be treated as an NPM dependency between these two repositories. So what's in the shared library? Well, I mentioned things, higher order components for queries and conditional rendering. So there are lots of different higher order components in here. Should we render something for authentication or not? Data formatting, so of requests and of responses. When we're formatting a request to send to the back end or something to come out to the front end. Uh, config files like translations and colors are consistent across the environments types. Uh, so we use Flow on the project, uh, which is typing, used a lot in React. It's an alternative to TypeScript. Uh, it's a bit of a subset of TypeScript. Um, and we have some specific types for products, for search results. So we share them between our two render environments, which allows a very consistent Redux store flow into our application. API calls are completely shared. And then the whole Redux store is shared. So actions, reducers, selectors, all of that is shared between the two. And we choose which parts of the Redux store we want to use in web and which parts in native, so we don't have a bulky Redux store for either. On the approach to sharing, I mentioned some conditional components. So we make a lot of use of the recompose library, which is sort of a utility belt for higher order, com higher order components in React. So we see here we import compose, branch, and render components. We have a map state to props, which takes a state, uses a shared selector, and it will return the user's permissions. Then we have a higher order component that takes a permission and an unauthorized component. It will then use compose to connect to the store via map state to props. And then we use branch from recompose. So branch takes a condition, a component, and then its secondary components. If the condition is true, it renders the first component. If the condition is false, it renders the second component. So here we're saying if the user does not have the permission, 
render the unauthorized components. Otherwise, it will render whatever components we wrap in this higher order components. So render of authorized permission create role. This will then render the role creation uh, page wrapper if the user has that permission. And going back to sort of that shared library. So as I mentioned, we transpiled to CommonJS. It was, we, we spent some time figuring out how to do this because we didn't really want to transpile our code, but after trying not to do it for a long time, we realized it was really the best way. The common standard sort of for node modules is to transpile to CommonJS. Uh, we used a Webpack configuration um, and used that to build into CommonJS. It's CommonJS 2, that's a bit of a, a detail, it just allows exports from your library. And it's generally a generic Webpack configuration with Babel. Uh, but the interesting part that saved us a lot of headaches was this externals, which allows us to use the parent's library's dependency. So web and native could in the future be on different versions of React. And this allows us to say, use the importing uh, repository's version of React. So if web's on one version and native's on another, we can use the importing parent's uh, version of that. And the same for React Apollo, and actually we did the same for Redux. But how do we publish a private repository? This was the question we're asking ourselves. Um, initially, we did it with Git tags, and we had a bot account on GitHub with uh, a basic authentication token. This is not a best practice in any way. Um, so we put the authentication token in here, the repository name, and then a Git tag, which is versioned on the branch name. It worked quite well. Yarn link was really useful for local development, so we can link to our local version of that repository. But it didn't really scale as our Versioning didn't really have any semantics, and from, from a security point of view, we didn't really like having this authentication token in our source code. So going over the workflow, we had to yarn build, release a tag, push the tag, merge, and update the package JSON in native and web. We moved to a private um, versioning software called Package Cloud. Uh, we could have used NPM's private repositories, but made.com already had this as a provider which allows us to make a much more normal package JSON where we can have normal versioning. And it sort of pushed developers to, developers to use semantic versioning and moved our releasing into a CI, which was much better from a versioning point of view. But we're using App Center. So App Center's a CI for, uh, well, for native app deployment, and it's really good for React Native deployments. It's built by Microsoft, but it's still good. And we needed to pull the shared library. And it's uh, mobile center is re sorry app center they renamed to is really good at keeping things simple, but that means you can't do complicated things sometimes. But they have a support button in the bottom right, so I sent a quick question saying we're wanting to use a shared library. We require an npm install from a private repo. What's the best practice for doing this on app center? Microsoft came back to us saying they don't currently support this. They do support VSTS, which I'm sure we're all really happy about, um, but private repos are not yet available. So we thought we were stuck, um, but there is a way, and there is a blog post that's supposed to load here in a second. Um, if not, I will attach it, there we go. Uh, so installing private impact as an app center. We figured out there is a way. Um, you can add a post, clone a post clone script to app center, and basically do whatever you want in bash, like change the node version, install detox if you're doing testing. Uh, but what we did was echo out and on our npm file, which allows authentication, we had the authentication token in an environment variable in App Center, which you can, uh, you can protect the environment variable if you want to, which was useful. And then our builds could then work because we have an RNPM file. When we on yarn install or npm install, it would use that for authentication, and that allowed us to use it on App Center. In conclusion, code sharing has a great advantage, is a great advantage of React and React Native. Not all your code is shareable, um, but a lot of it is. In my view, web apps and native apps should have a different UX, so the fact we can't share all of the rendering isn't a big uh, imposition to us because we should probably be styling them differently anyway. High order components are really useful for sharing the non-render logic, even if you're not sharing code between React and React Native. And publishing a private NPM repository, uh, sorry, NPM package, makes your workflow a lot simpler and keeps versioning more semantic. Finally, a quick message from made.com, who I'm really enjoying working with. Um, as I mentioned, they're moving their main website and their app to React Native, therefore they are hiring, and they're gonna be hiring a bigger React and React Native team as it goes on. 
We're about eight developers on the project at the minute, and that's going to be growing over the next months. So feel free to go to their website or send me an email and I can put you in touch. Um, but if you're interested, they'll be very keen to talk to you. And yeah, uh, I've been Ben from Theodore. I think there'll be a time for questions at the end.